vlog. This week, me, Ollie, and Taff are doing our first remote field expedition. We'll be camping about 50 kilometers away from Halley Base to service five science sites. So, what do we wear? We start off with a base layer. This is just some ordinary workers' trousers, a t shirt, some thick socks. This is followed by some salopettes to keep the moisture out and to keep our legs nice and cozy. After that, we wear a thick fleece and then a warm jacket. We have a spare set of gloves, hats, and socks in our emergency bag just in case one set gets blown away in the wind. We still have protection. And we also have an emergency jacket, which is a really, really thick downfield wrap jacket, which is lovely and cozy. And I kind of want one because it's so expensive. Then we have my harness. It has everything you need to survive. We have lots of alpine gear. So we have ice screws, we have ascenders, we have lots of prussics and slings and pulleys. So this is in case someone falls down the crevasse, we can pull them out. Then finally, we have a normal hat and then sunglasses. You will go snow blind in about 10 minutes if you don't have sunglasses. And snow blind is where your eyeballs get sunburned. And yeah, you don't want that. It's not even nice to think about. And then finally, we have a balaclava. And this is really important when you're on the skidoos because if you're going across the ice sheet at 20 kilometers an hour, the wind chill will give you frost nip on your cheeks within 10, 20 minutes. So we need to make sure they're nicely covered. We do a buddy buddy check and then you're ready to go. So ice sheets are relatively safe places to be, but there is still an element of danger that there might be a crevasse underneath you. So to mitigate these risks, we do something called linked travel. But essentially what it is, is you have two skidoos that are linked together with a rope, and you are tied to your skidoo. So if one skidoo falls down a crevasse, the other skidoo will catch the skidoo, that will catch you, and you'll basically just dangle in this crevasse until someone comes and helps you out. We'll be doing two skidoos that are doing linked travel, one with a radar to check for crevasses, and they'll forage a path across the ice shelf using a GPS and the snowcat will be following closely behind towing the third skidoo with all of our equipment. Then when we want to head back to Halley, we'll all jump in the snowcat, we'll put on some tunes and then we'll tow the three skidoos and all the equipment back along this path that's been checked and it should be a lot more comfortable than the ride out. So we're meant to be going to our field site but as you can see the contrast is awful. We're actually on quite a steep hill but you can't tell just because it's there's that much cloud it looks like snow you can't tell where any features are there's no sun there's no shadow so you almost roll twice so we think about heading back No better. Yeah, I think it's been pretty good. <laughs> There's a break in the weather in the distance and it looks like the weather's clearing up and hopefully we should be good to go in half an hour or so. So we're here, we arrived at the crack, and you can't really see anything, can you, until you hit there. Oh my god, that is a large chasm.
This was 10 centimetres across. Yeah, so yeah, we're the, they were stepping back and forth with the EP reses in the dog cage. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Pretty amazing. This is ridiculous. <laughs> That is insane. Oh my god. So, we're buying a P-Res, um, this is an instrument that's on the edge of the crack and what it's doing is it's uh, bouncing radio waves off um, this dog cage that's on the other side of the crack and then it's measuring the distance, the time delay for the signal to come back and then work out the distance. Um, so this crack we're at now, a year ago was 10 centimetres wide and this was the, the, the tip of the crack. Um, I'll show you it now. <laughs> it's so fun fact we dug the, in the wrong place we dug about four meters down and we didn't find the instrument so we've got to come back tomorrow and dig around some more to find it. It's been a pretty full on day, a lot of digging, a lot of shifting, pretty incredible day. But now we're going to head back to camp and set up for night number two in the cold. Uh, night one was amazing. We have sheepskin, we have down sleeping bags. It was in fact too hot there actually. One thing that came very useful was the pee bottle. Um, this is because when you are in bed, you do not want to get out of bed in the middle of Antarctica to walk to the pee tent. Um, yeah, pee bottles are lifesavers. So, that's all. Just lay there. Yeah, then you're going to need that one. It's a good pillow though, right? Maybe I was really hungry, maybe I was worn out, but this food tasted incredible. I know it's just dehydrated ration packs, but it tasted really, really good. To top it off, we had some whiskey with some tea and a lot of chocolate. The chocolates that we get down here are all rationed chocolates because they all come down in one big shipment. And occasionally you come across a Cadbury's bar from like the 1980s or 90s, which is pretty bizarre because they're a lot bigger 
and they're a lot sweeter and a lot more tasty. What happened, Cadbury's man? What happened? So we sleep on a sheepskin rug with a roll mat and a hard board underneath to keep us right off the snow. And on top of that, we have a really thick Antarctic grade sleeping bag. So we are incredibly warm in here. We also have a tilly lamp in case it gets really cold, but I doubt we'll need to use it. So we're gonna take an early night. It's around 9 p.m. We'll see you tomorrow for the chasm.